Yo, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video is going to be a tutorial for the bot NSB. But guys, before we get into it, I just want to address something absolutely insane. Alright guys, so as of right this second, we have 109 subscribers, but you can see here guys, look at that. We hit 100 freaking subs guys. This is absolutely insane. I don't remember when we hit it. I think it might have been... Thursday, like Friday night or something. I don't know. It was like the day after I uploaded this video, so it wasn't that long. It was on like Sunday, and I was refreshing. I was refreshing a hundred bang bang. We did it, guys. Absolutely insane. Thank you all so much for the support. But guys, without any further ado, let's hop right into the Nike Shoe Bot tutorial. All right. So first things first, we're gonna break down all the tabs in NSB and what they all are and do. Starting off with the tasks tab, as soon as you open your bot, this is going to be what you're greeted with. You're not going to have these here, it's going to say no task created yet. Create tasks, you click here, I'll go over how to create tasks for everything later. Uh, down at the bottom we have start all, obviously that starts all your tasks, stop all stops them all. Manual capture, this is where you're going to click to get your captures that you need to solve when uh, you know tasks need them. Edit all, I will go over this a little later in the video, and delete all, obviously if I click this and I hit yes, it's going to delete all of my tasks here. Proxies tab, this is where you add your proxies in, um, add proxy list, name your proxy list whatever you want, say I have some Oculus data centers, I would just name it Ocula data center, and I would paste my proxies into here, you can latency check, which is to check the speed of them, and it'll tell you right here the speed, validate the format to make sure they're right, or submit to submit the list of proxies. Up here is your cookie jar, I'll go over this a little later. Import and export cookies, again I'll talk about that later. Smart local IP for checkout for undefeated, leave that checked. Um, there's basically just on undefeated sometimes if you don't check out on your home IP, uh, they send out cancellation, so you're going to want to have that checked off. Billing profile, this is where you add your billing profiles. New billing, to make a billing profile, first name, last name, this is pretty self-explanatory, this is where you put in your address and everything, your name, you know your card information you also set a checkout limit for your tasks or your billing profiles sorry uh, you can do a group of billing profiles here and also import and export billing profiles captchas this is where you're going to set up your captcha solvers now to make a new solver click sol new solver caption name you can name it whatever you want i named mine the what email it is just to you know keep them organized you're going to put your proxy right here yes you do need proxies for your captcha solvers select caption method you're going to want to use original for all of them now basically what the captures are is the little things that you click that say i'm not a robot i'm sure you're all familiar with them um and you know regarding shopify you farm these emails to get one clicks which are basically you just click the uh you know the button once that says i'm not a robot and you're straight there you don't have to solve a puzzle where you have to click all the taxis and things like that if you're not familiar with aycd i'll link a few videos down to one of my friends uh soflow sneakers i'll link some of his videos down in the description below where you could check out you know kind of more uh, about CAPTCHAs and AYCD and how that all works. Now moving on to monitors. This is where you could add in your Discord. This is what's really cool about NSB. New monitor, you can select your Discord, select the channel and click fetch servers and you can actually connect your cook groups, um, what's it called, monitor to your NSB. You can also click your little Discord icon up here and log in your Discord. I don't really use this. I use the built-in monitor which is on the task section right here if you click on this. Um, it'll open this. I'll show you how to do this in a little bit. Profile. This is basically where it tells you the current version you on, how much longer you have until your bot expires, your key expires, your machine ID. You can also deactivate if you need to reactivate if you're renting out or something like that. Uh, updates. If you click this button, it'll pop up right here. It'll tell you if there's an update available or if you're on the latest version. You're always going to want to make sure you're on the latest version and copped. Obviously, this right here is where it tells you what uh, you've copped with the bot. If you ever want to view the logs, you can click these three dots and click logs or you can send your logs to Discord. So now I'm going to be showing you how to set up for foot sites, Shopify, and Supreme, and Easy Supply. Alright guys, so first things first, we're going to talk about foot sites. Now on foot sites, um, they've kind of been weird lately because they switched their bot protection to a different form of bot protection called Data Dome now. And um, what you used to have to do on foot sites was generate what are called cookies, sensor cookies before a drop, and you needed these cookies to be able to check out with the bot during a drop on 
on foot sites. But now that a lot of foot sites have started to implement this new bot protection called Data Dome, it looks like that might not be something we need to deal with anymore. But as of right now, like right the second that filming this video, only Foot Action and Kids Foot Locker have Data Dome fully implemented, so you do not need to generate cookies for those sites, but that could change in the near future. All right, so if you want to bot any other site besides Kids Foot Locker or Foot Action, what you're gonna need to do as of right now, like I said, you're gonna wanna hit Create Tasks up here, and as you see, I've already selected Foot Locker, but you could click this drop down, find your site. So again, for this example, we'll use Foot Locker. You're gonna click this little drop down right here. This is what's gonna look like. You're gonna click this drop down, and you're gonna click Generator Mode and Submit. Now, once you've submitted this, you're going to see in your tasks, uh, don't mind these, by the way, this is for Supreme tomorrow, which uh, stay tuned for a live cap on that. You're going to see a task that looks like this, and all you're going to do is simply hit the play button, and it's going to see, you're going to see it turn gray and start generating cookies. Now, to view the cookies that you've generated, you're going to want to go up here to your proxies tab, and over here in the right-hand corner, there's this little cookie icon. You can click on this. Also, make sure you have some data center proxies in here. Um, I have about 25, that's more than enough, you don't really need that many, you could have like 5 to 10, that'll be just fine. And as you can see right here, it says uh, footlocker.com and 7, and you can see it's going up, and that is how many cookies we have generated. Now there's going to be a few things you're going to want to keep in mind when you're generating cookies. One, you want to generate in intervals. What I do when I gen cookies is I generally will leave these tasks going for about 1 to 2 hours, and I'll stop them for about 2 hours. And then after that 2 hours, I'll start them up for another 1 to 2 hours and let them rest. And you want to start generating these cookies you know, the day before into the night of even the morning of the drop, the, the, you know, the more recent that the cookies are, the better that they will be. A good rule of thumb is about 10 to 20 tasks per, ta sorry, 10 to 20 cookies per task. So if you're running uh, 10 tasks, about 100 to 200 cookies would be the amount that you'd want to have. So yeah guys, that's how you generate cookies for foot sites. Um, just keep in mind that this is subject to change uh, because of the bot protection, like I said before, I'll just also show you. Say we want to do East Bay, another foot site generator mode, submit, click the play button, and we see generating cookies. Go back into here, cookie jar, and if we just give it a second, and you can see we are generating cookies for eastbay.com. All right, guys, and so I'm going to show you how to actually set up your tasks for foot sites. So let's say we want to make a foot locker tasks, task, sorry. So we're going to go onto here, create task foot locker. We're gonna do normal mode, SKU. Now this is what you're gonna wanna fill out. This is how you're gonna tell the bot what product you would like it to look for. So I have Chrome pulled up here. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna find releases. And under releases, it's gonna show everything that is upcoming. Use these foam posits, for example. You're gonna go on the releases tab right here. When you go on the footlocker.com, you're going to find a shoe that is dropping and it's going to, when you click on it, it's going to bring up a page like this. Simply scroll down to the details page and right here is the ID. So you want to highlight that control C to copy it. Also is in the URL right up here. That's C22860001. After we do that, I'm just going to close that. And after we copied it, we're going to control V to paste it in there. All right, guys, so now that we have the SKU in here, we're going to have normal mode sizing. If you want random, you can leave it blank or you can type capital R, capital A is random. FA is first available. LA is last available. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you want a size range, let's say I want between sizes 9 and 10 and a half, I type 9. 9.5 comma 10 comma 10.5 and then this is going to select any size is from these here if i want say a 9 a 10 or a 12 i would just say 9 10 and 12 so each size you do that is just separated by a comma like so number of tasks all right well for example just for ra for random number of tasks is basically when you click submit how many tasks is going to make Advanced is where you can tweak your delays, but for foot sites, you don't need to worry about that. I'm just going to say um, three tasks, for example. For your proxies, you don't need to run local. Local means no proxy, so if everyone says ever says a local task, they're referring to using no proxy. Um, um, for foot sites, as of right now, ISPs and residential proxies are what you are going to be wanting to use. So, for example, I'm just going to pick my Scarlet Residential proxy list um, and then billing profile I'm just going to select test so I can show you what it will look like during the job submit and you can see here it made my three tasks all right
Now we're going to go down to these three tasks, and for footsight task, you want to start tasks about 15 minutes before the drop. So if the drop is at 10 a.m., you're going to want to start your task at 9.45 a.m., 15 minutes prior to the release. Now, when you click these, it's going to say acquiring session, checking product, and then it's going to say release after whatever amount of seconds, and then it's going to start by itself. And you can see right here, after you start, if you put in the SKU correctly, the name of the product right here should change to it. So this is right, Nike Air Foam Posit Pro in the men's sizing. But yeah, guys, that's how it is for pretty much all foot sites. Your foot sites are Foot Locker, Champs, East Bay, and Foot Action. Say I wanted to do Champs, um, I would just go to champs.com, and I would find the SKU exactly the same way that I did uh, for this, this one on Foot Locker. Again, I'll just use these for an example. If this is pulled up, just, just check back later. Um, it usually changes to the actual product page when it's, it's like less than uh, a day. So if it's like this, just wait. But it's just going to be the same way as the Foot Locker. You're just going to copy it. It's going to be in the URL or down below in the description. Control C, Control V into here. Um, also, completely when you're running your foot site tasks say you have about 100 tasks i would say maybe make about 20 percent of them under restock mode um this is just going to give your tasks a little bit more diversity and overall in my experience at least increase your chances of copying so overall for foot sites what do we have again make sure you generate your cookies a few days leading into the drop and as cl the closer you can gen them to the drop uh, the better also the more cookies 10 to 20 cookies per task but the more you have really the better. Um, and I just showed you how to create a task, so that is foot sites. Now we're going to go over Yeezy Supply because it is kind of similar in a sense. So to um, create cookies for Yeezy Supply, you do need cookies for Yeezy Supply. So for Yeezy Supply, it's going to be basically the same thing. Going to Create Tasks, Yeezy Supply, Generator Mode, all this else is going to go away. Submit, that's all you have to do. Hit the play button if you want to view them. Also again, Proxies tab, Cookie icon here. And as you can see, it's going to pop up. Keep in mind that um, for Easy Supply, you only need about one to two cookies per task instead of ten to twenty. Reason being, um, Easy Supply just really doesn't use as many as foot sites do. So you only need about one to two cookies per task. And uh, genning cookies for Easy Supply is also going to be a lot slower for East Bay. Um, and foot site, sorry. So as you can see here, I generated like 50 cookies for Foot Locker in like two minutes. And as you can see here, I have it going on Easy Supply and I haven't even gotten one. So it does take a little while. Just be patient. You don't need that many cookies for Easy Supply, about one to two per task. Now creating Easy Supply task is kind of similar to Foot Locker. Go back on Easy Supply. Again, normal mode. Don't mess with Q only. Just leave all your tasks on normal mode. To find the PID, again, the product ID, you're going to go on to yeezysupply.com. You're going to click the product, which is right here. So if I go home, here's the product. We'll just use this as an example. And right up here in the URL, this is the PID, aka the product ID. Highlight that. Control C to copy. Minimize this. Control V to paste. GZ8668. Uh, size, again random ra for random we'll just do three for example and you're going to want to use also you can use a mix of dc's data center proxies and residential proxies on easy supply for this example i'm just going to use my dc list and i'll put the test profile once again just like foot sites you really don't need to mess with the advanced settings browser checkout by the way means that once a um task gets to the actual page where it, all you have to do is co click submit order it will actually pop up in a browser for you to manually click i never turn this on but if you want to have that on i um, mean you can so yeah what was i saying so we've done all this three tasks dc proxies my test profile we're going to click submit and you can see it's added these three down here now you're not going to the time that you want to start your easy supply tasks in is if you've ever had a easy supply drop or you're familiar with them um basically what it will say is uh when you click on the item it'll say you are in waiting room or waiting room or something like that and then probably so mo for me easy supply drops are at 9 a.m eastern time and uh you know right at 9 it doesn't they're not actually selling the shoe so at about 9 10 like 5 to 10 minutes after the release time up here where it says like waiting room 
or you are in the waiting room, it'll change and say sale started. Once it says sale started, as soon as you see it says sale started, you want to start all your easy supply tasks. So let's say, um, you know, what was I? I was looking at easy supply. I was looking, oh, it hits like 9, 10, let's say. And it says, oh, I see that it says sale started on easy supply. Uh, if you're in a cook group, they'll let you know when to start your task and when this happens. But again, if you are just by yourself, when you see that sale started, you're going to click your play button and start your tasks for your Yeezy supply. Um, I am getting captures here. Uh, yeah, you're also going to get these CAPTCHAs. You don't need to actually solve any puzzles. It just goes like this. So now you can see it says monitoring. But uh, if you've done this correctly, when the job is actually happening, it'll say in queue or um, in waiting room. And then from there, there's not really much to do. You have some CAPTCHAs, but they'll pop up and they'll just click off themselves like that. You don't need to solve any puzzles or anything. And then really from there, I guess you just wait and hope you cop. All right, now that we've talked about um, foot sites and easy supply we're gonna talk about supreme so as you can see here I actually have a lot of supreme tasks set up because tomorrow is the supreme north face collaboration these are just a bunch of slots I'm not going for anything myself stay tuned for a live cut for that but supreme you don't need cookies so you're good you don't need to do that any of that generator nonsense like on foot sites and easy supply but to create supreme tasks you're gonna once again go create tasks click your drop down Supreme. Now you're going to have a few modes. You're going to have safe mode, fast mode, restock mode, and hybrid mode. I run probably about 75% of my tasks, if not all of them, like 90% of my tasks are safe mode and I have maybe 10% on restock mode. All right, hybrid mode makes it so that basically it's going to do half and half. It's going to pop up a browser. I would not recommend the one time that I had that mode on. It, it just did not end well. So just make sure the majority of your tasks are on safe mode and a few restock mode. Now, you have a few ways. There's not just one, you know, product ID or SKU like there was on foot sites and easy supply. You can either have a link. You're not going to get a link unless you're going for like a restock so don't worry about that and you're gonna have category color and keywords now category say no so for example tomorrow this is how I set up my tasks here category I want to go for these jackets right so it's gonna be under the jackets category you know whatever you can select whatever category you want so you want a t-shirt it's gonna be in the t-shirts if you want a sweatshirt or like a hoodie it's gonna be under sweatshirts if you want a hat be under hats pretty self-explanatory so in my case I'm going for jackets so I'm gonna click jackets and then the um, item coming out tomorrow is called the hooded f uh, f mount like fleece I think hooded fleece or something um, hooded s logo fleece so yeah basically what I put as the keywords is just hooded fleece you can just select whatever you want you know to put as your keywords um, most of the time if you have your category correct uh, you'll be good if you just put like you know whatever else is going to be in the product name also a great way to you know kind of pick out your keywords and see what you want to go for you can go on supremecommunity.com drop list latest and it'll show you what's coming out so this this right here this uh, fleece is what I'm going for this is what the actual product is going to load up as on supreme so this is its actual name so you can see it's called supreme slash the north face s logo hooded f uh, fleece right there right hooded fleece that's what I have as my keyword you don't don't put supreme or like the north face or anything as your as your keyword you want to find put something as your keyword that is unique to this item so you can see hooded fleece is unique to this item hooded fleece is not in any other name of anything and obviously this is a jacket so you know jacket so it's gonna be in the jacket category so yeah my keywords are hooded fleece and then color you going to select oh also by the way I forgot to mention in keywords um, hooded and fleece are two separate keywords your keywords are separated by spaces so just keep that in mind so, but this is like correct if you want to type say my keyword was say I wanted to go for something else say I wanted to go for like the tote bag I would just type tote bag and I would switch my tote bag would be under accessories you'd be good with this as long as there's nothing else that says tote bag in its in its name all right anyway back to the hooded fleece now you're gonna want to run uh, DC's or yeah DC's pretty much DC's and resis is what you're gonna be wanting using on supreme there's been some issues lately with DC's but I'm sure by the time you see this video the problems will be sorted out with most proxy providers so you can run a mix of data center proxies and residentials with supreme uh, regarding color, 
If you want a certain color, you could type in here. The options for this jacket I think were red, green, and black. So if I wanted red, obviously I'd type red. If I want black, obviously I'd type black. If I want green, obviously I'd type green. But what if I want red and black, but not green? Simply red, comma, black. And that is how I would go about doing that. All right, but let's say I want a specific size. Right, so I'm gonna go, here's the sizing. If you want random, you can type RA, again, FA, first available, LA, last available. But let's say I want a small and a large, but not a medium or an extra large. I would type in small, space, small, comma, space, large. And that it would pick up small or large. If I want, um, you know, medium or extra large, I would say medium, comma, space, X large. X large is how you type, um, extra large. For this example, I'm just going to go random, so RA, and then simply put advanced. You don't really need to, the standard, you know, the default delays are pretty pretty good, so you don't need to mess with the advanced settings. So from here, this is all you need to do. You don't need to mess with any of these, if you're in the United States at least. Unless you're in Japan, you don't need to worry about any of these. Uh, schedule tasks, you can just, like, select a certain time say you're not going to be at your computer you could just set a time for it to um run by itself i wouldn't recommend that anytime you're going for a job i think it's best to you know be in front of your computer and actually seeing what's going on with your bot but if you need that that option's there so we're all good here we got supreme we got safe mode random sizing we want three tasks dc proxies our test profile obviously you're not going to use a test profile on the actual job you're going to select your uh you know correct profile Keywords, jackets category, we want a random color. If you want a random color, just leave the color blank, submit, and there we go. Now regarding when you're going to want to start Supreme Tasks, about 20 to 30 seconds for your tasks are safe. 20 to 30 seconds before the drop, that is, so it's 11 a.m. Eastern, start them at 10, 59, and 30 to 40 seconds. Also, another thing I forgot to mention with Supreme is CAPTCHAs. This is actually a pretty big thing. So during your drop, if you're doing it correctly, you're going to see this little manual CAPTCHA button down at the bottom and the center. You're going to start to see it flashing red. It's going to open your CAPTCHA profiles. Now, when it opens these CAPTCHAs, it's going to, you're going to either get a, a few things, one of a few things are going to happen. One, it's going to be the first CAPTCHA that you get, which is just going to be invisible. It's just going to check off by itself and solve itself. Two, you're going to get a one click for your um, second CAPTCHA, which is, you know, if you formed your email enough where you just get that one click and it goes straight to checkout, or you're going to get your CAPTCHA where you actually need to solve uh, puzzles and you're, you know, you're going to be clicking all your taxis and your fire hydrants, things like that, and you're going to be cursing your head off because, um, you know, those are a pain in the ass to solve. But So either one of those three things is going to happen, so if you see this manual CAPTCHA button pop up, be prepared to solve CAPTCHAs. Alright, so now that we've talked about foot sites, Yeezy Supply, and Supreme, we're going to talk about what is arguably the most difficult to bot which is Shopify. And man, if you guys watch my videos, you know I just love to bot Shopify. But anyway, that's another story. So what you're going to want to do for Shopify, if you don't know what Shopify is, is basically a, you know, kind of online store. Um, a lot of Shopify sites include Kith, Concepts, Bodega, Shop Nice Kicks, Jimmy Jazz, uh, is shoe is um, Shopify sorry shoe palace recently switched to Shopify so it's all of those kinds of sites now before talking about anything else I'm going to show you how to set up tasks for Shopify now you don't need cookies for Shopify so what you're going to do if you want to set up a Shopify task um, a lot of you know things vary between different sites but what is one of the most common Shopify sites to bot is Kith so I'm going to use that as an example all right so we type in Kith uh, on our create tasks and then you can see here we have a few different modes we have safe fast mode checkout link and we have cyborg 3.0 we have not seen cyborg 3.0 on foot sites easy supply or um, supreme so what is cyborg 3.0 cyborg 3.0 is basically nsb's mode that allows them to bypass shopify's bot protection so anytime you are botting shopify you're going to want to make sure you're on cyborg 3.0 well not anytime really but anytime bot protection is on you're going to want to use cyborg 3.0 and bot protection is on pretty much every single release on pretty 
on like all the big Shopify websites. If you're ever unsure of which mode to run, it's most likely Cyborg 3.0. I don't think I've ever bought a Shopify site and used anything besides Cyborg 3.0. All right, now in order for our bot to find the item we want, there's gonna be some different options than what we have seen previously. There's a uh, link, there's variants, and there's keywords. Keywords are what I showed you before, like on Supreme. So say tomorrow the off-white Jordan 5s are dropping. Um, I guess we could just say off-white Jordan 5, sorry, space, 5, space, sale. We could put those as our keywords. You know, you can mess around with the keywords. Maybe your cook group will give you some keywords. But in my experience, keywords do not pick up on Shopify. So what you're really going to want is a link to the product. But you're probably thinking, Mark, how am I supposed to get a link to the product if the product has not even dropped yet? Well, this is where being in a cook group really comes in handy because your cook groups will give you early links. Um, how they get these links, to be honest, I am 100% not sure, but <laughs> they do send them to you. If you're in a cook group, um, if you honestly need, you can add me on Discord down in the description. If you need ELs, early links that is, uh, you can DM me on Discord and I have them. So what you're going to need to do is once you get your early link for Kith, um, well let's just say, hold on, let me look here. We had an early, let me find the early link from earlier. We had the skeleton, uh, air, orange skeleton air forces drop today. Okay, so this was the link that I got from my cook group. Once you type in the link, everything else goes away because the link is pretty much all you need. You don't need keywords and a variant if you have the link, you get what I'm saying? Um, you don't always want to run all your tasks on the link because if the link is wrong by any chance, um, you need some keywords to back it up. So run most of your tasks with the link if you have one and then a few others with keyword. But let's just say for now you have the link because that's most of the time keywords don't pick up on Shopify and you're going to want that link as I said. Now Cyborg 3.0 mode, again sizing is the same. If I want to range say 9 to 10, 9, 9.5, 10, but let's just say for example I want random. Again, RA, number of tasks, self-explanatory. Shopify sites. You can use no proxy on Shopify sites, but do not use more than two tasks do not make more than two tasks per site with no proxy um, if you do this there is a high chance that you will be banned from that site get your IP banned that is so if you want to run more than this um, this you can run up to two say I have say I want to run five tasks on kith I would run two with no proxy so I'd go like this click submit but I would say one on five tasks right so three and then I would change to DCs. DCs are what you're going to want to use. You can also run some resis, but resis tend to be too slow on Shopify. Shopify is about speed and not inconsistency. So you can use DCs, data center proxies, that is, which are faster than residentials. Submit. And as you can see, they are down here. Now I'm going to show you guys little tips, some little tips and tricks right now. So for Shopify, uh, you're actually going to want to tweak your advanced settings. Um, here's a little tip if you can just do this in individually in the tasks if you click advanced here You can you know mess with the delays and stuff like that But if you click right here or edit all you can see it has all these things and ha each thing has letters next to them And all these letters correspond to a mass edit, uh, you know shortcut on your keyboard so What I'm about to tell you is for all of these kith tasks that I just created I want to actually make the I want to tweak the delays which is the advanced settings. Now, you can see right here timeouts that is what the delays are and you can see it has the letter M next to it. If I hold control and I cl click and hold and drag my mouse over, I can select tasks, right? So now you see that these kith tasks are highlighted. Now I can either click here and then timeouts, but if you want to be really quick, you can hit control and then what was it again? M, right? You're going to want to hit Control M and it pops this up. Um, when I originally initially make Shopify tax, tasks, sorry, I always put both delays at 10,000. Now, if you hover over them, you can see it that actually went through. It says monitor timeout and restock timeout 10,000. Now, what are these timeouts? Monitor timeout is basically how often the task is going to refresh the site and scan the site for the product. Um, if you have a link, this is how often the uh, you know task is going to refresh the site and look for this link. Um, 
it's in milliseconds, so 10,000 is 10 seconds, so every 10 seconds going to refresh, but you're probably thinking, Mark, 10 seconds, that is a lot of time. Well, now what you're going to want to do for Shopify tasks, you want to start about half of your Shopify tasks. You might want to write this down because this is crucial to hitting Shopify. You want to start about half of your tasks um, about one minute to a minute and a half before a drop. And then 30 seconds before the drop, you're going to want to mass change all of these delays back down to something lower, like 3,500, like so. Now, what this does is basically it takes that super high delay and it lowers it down because with Shopify, you never really know if something could drop early or you know anything happens like that. So that's basically what you're doing to because if you are if you start these tasks two minutes or you know a minute to a minute and a half early, like I said, and they're constantly refreshing. Obviously, Kith is going to see that, and they're going to be like, yo, let's go with that, banned, and you're not going to hit, and it's going to suck ass. All right, now th that is how you bypass that. So, all right, so let me control, get all of these, 10,000 each. All right, all right, so let's say that Kith, Kith drops at 10 a.m. Eastern. Let's just say it's 9.59, all right? So we start half of our tasks, or about half, and you can see, obviously, it's going to say waiting for stock. And then um, when it gets to 30 seconds before the drop, highlight all the tasks, control M, lower those delays. Well, you're probably thinking, when do I start the other half of the tasks? As soon as it hits 10 o'clock, start the other tasks. So say we started these at 9.59. Say uh, it just hits, oh, it just hit 10 o'clock. Start the other tasks. And then if you did it right, you will start getting captures popping up. All right, guys, so I know that might have been kind of confusing and a lot to take in, so I'm just going to kind of summarize over what I just said. So to make a task, let's say Kith. Kith is Shopify. Cyborg 3.0 mode. We get our link. If you don't have a link, keywords are fine. Put our link in there. Sizing, we want random. Don't You don't want to run a lot of tasks on Shopify because you will get very overwhelmed by the captures. Um, so let's just say two tasks. Again, you can run up to two tasks per site, no proxy. Select our billing profile. And then in advances, what I usually do, I'm setting up 10,000, 10,000. Submit. And then I can make three tasks with, uh, you know, DCs. All right, there we go. So now we can see that these are 10,000. Oh, okay, the drop is at 10 and it just hit 9.59, a minute before the drop. Start half of my tasks. And then we wait a little bit, wait a little bit. You know, you're kind of getting chill, and it's going through that last minute. Oh, it just hit 10 o'clock. Start the other half of my task. Captures are going to start popping up. It's going to be a whole thing. It's going to be a crazy show. And then you just, you know, you're going to be solving captures, and hopefully you hit. But that is how you bought Shopify on NSB. I know it's kind of a lot to take in. Shopify is kind of something difficult to learn. It definitely took me a little bit. If you have any questions, my Discord is down in the description. Be sure to add me. I'm always online on Discord. You can DM me and I will be sure to get back to you. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are here till the end, as always, I appreciate you a lot. And, uh, guys, we hit 100 subs. We're about almost at 110. We might be at 110. I should probably I should probably check. But uh, um, I guess next goal is 200, 500 maybe. I don't know. We're looking pretty far ahead in the future here. But I'm pretty optimistic if I'm not if I'm being completely honest. But thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. Um. You know, I've been pretty busy with school lately, but I'm trying to make videos as pos as much as possible. So just thank you guys all for the support. Uh, my Discord, if you guys want to talk or just add me, if you have any questions about anything sneaker reselling related or just really anything, if you just want to talk, I guess, my Discord is down below where you can add me and hit my DMs and I'll be sure to get back to you. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.